The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. A very scary experience. You know, God is a solution. God is a 12-step. I like where he's going here. Helps the community grow, helps us grow. <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie has done a phenomenal job. Lack of open-mindedness. And you're talking about taking people through a spiritual process and getting them into recovery. Thanks, Monty, uh, and thanks for all your support. We need spirituality to make this thing work long-term. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. And now, broadcasting on location somewhere in the vast expanse of the Pacific Northwest, it's the over-opinionated 12-stepologist, The Monty Man. That's right. More that's right. I am your host, the Monty Man, here at Take Twelve Recovery Radio, the world's oldest and only faith-based recovery radio station, broadcasting uh, to you and for you from the studios of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting on the outskirts of beautiful downtown Albany, Oregon. Uh, broadcasting worldwide, we're in every country. Uh, that allows uh, the internet and uh, free broadcasting. So uh, welcome aboard to all of you. Uh, many of our friends in Dubai, Australia. Uh, I just got an email. Uh, I actually got a phone call from a, from a gentleman in Wales here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, shout out to all you guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of Take 12 Radio. Without you, there's no show. It doesn't matter how good the show is. It doesn't matter how entertaining the show is. If there's nobody listening, there's nobody listening. So we are grateful to all of our listeners. Uh, hey, listen, our email address is take12radio at comcast.net. You're going to want that because I know some of you are going to be sending me emails after this show today because I could never be accused of not being diverse in my guests on this show. Many of you know that I'm a Bible-thumping, big-book-thumping, born-again Christian. I make no apologies for it. And some of you who are of the same flavor may take a little issue with me today, but let your heart not be troubled. Don't get too excited because you just may not have any reason to be upset. My guest today, let me just ask you this. What if you had somebody in your life that could, could speak speak into your life and say to you, Listen, um, I, I really, I really truly believe that there is an area in your life where I may be able to assist you with, I can help you with, or at least point out some things that maybe you are, you yourself aren't even aware of. Um, would that be a great thing? I mean, I have people in my life, they have permission to speak into my life. They have permission to yank on my chain anytime they think I'm going off the rails because I'm a recovery guy. And even if they're wrong, it's worth having those people in your life to be accountable with those people, with people in your life that will do that and care enough about you to be able to say, hey, um, I'm kind of sensing this going on with you. Well, sometimes people can sense things. Sometimes people can know things. And you would be surprised at the giftings that our creator has given many, many people. And such a person is Katie Beecher. Um, Katie is someone who has, has struggled in her life uh, with bulimia before. Uh, she's had her own issues, and she's walked through some uh, eating disorder and depression and anxiety. And at one point, she was 60 pounds overweight. And if it was not for her huge challenges, Katie says she wouldn't be doing the work she's doing today. Today on my show... Your show, folks, is international medical intuitive medium artist and licensed professional counselor Katie Beecher. Hey, Katie, how you doing? Good. How are you, Monty? Uh, I'm I'm doing great. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice so, to be here. So before we get into this, let, let's let's calm down, my Christian brothers and sisters that may be going <laughs> ah, right uh, because I'm sure you've heard you've heard it all. Um, 
what you do is what I call, you know, another word for for me would be the gift of discernment. Um, and, and, exactly. and, and, and you, you have a, a, a really a spiritual gifting. And we know that addiction particularly is a met, can be a medical issue with the spiritual solution, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Okay. And, and you have a particular gifting, uh, uh, where you can speak into people's lives and, and, and you've been doing this uh, for a while, but explain to people uh, that may be listening that are of the faith community, that may be freaking out right now and getting ready to send me some emails. What are you doing? Da, 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 you know, because I know I'm going to get them. Um, right. Why this is not a a non biblical or anti Christian thing? Why this thing is very much um, a God given gift? Absolutely. Um, well, when I was very very young, uh, I realized that I knew what. A lot of adults were talking about I could um, feel a lot of closeness with nature and with animals and things like that. So um, this never felt, um, you know, unusual for me. And um, as I, I, when I was about 10 years old, um, movies like The Exorcist and things like that were starting to come out. Um, and I was absolutely not only appalled, I was scared to death Mm. and, um, wanted absolutely nothing to do with anything like that. Um, I was terrified. I felt like there was evil around. Um, I've always had the ability to pick that up and what made me feel safe was the Lord's prayer. So that has always been a comforting force. The Lord's prayer. Yeah. The, the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Um, my my grandparents, um, my regular family was not the most functional, loving group of people, um, but my grandparents were, um, they took me to church, um, and, you know, that was very comforting. And so, you know, just being around that kind of atmosphere um, really centered me. And um, so if it wasn't for that foundation, first mm-hmm. of all, you know, I, I would not um, even have felt safe. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it all, you know, it started with that. And um, I really, even my recovery, and I, I know I told you a little bit about this story, when I was um, bulimic and had depression and everything, I sought out help by myself. I knew that either I was going to get better or I was going to commit suicide because I just couldn't live like this. Yeah. And, um, you know, my faith was the thing that kept me alive, I believe. And I found a therapist who, um, she taught me about connecting with God within. And it was connecting with God within that I fully believe is what helped me to get better. Because as you know, with, it wasn't a 12 step thing, but as you know, with 12 steps, there's a big, huge spiritual component. Yeah. Um, and I think that when, a lot of people go through recovery programs now, especially with eating disorders, that's really missing. So um, for me, it was connecting with God within, um, and that's also your intuition. I believe that when you're listening to God, you're listening to what's best for you and what's best your loving force. But that was what really helped with my recovery and was essential to it. So this all, you know, the core of my whole life and everything that started me um, on this journey and just getting better started with God. Yeah. 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 And we and we know we we know that 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 when you turn your will and your life over to the care of God, his spirit comes to live within you. And we talked we talked about on last week's show um, with Bruce and and, and my co-host, his spirit speaks to your spirit. And so there's a communication going on there that's perfectly natural. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing about this that is that's evil, that's wrong, that's, if anything, it's, it's so the opposite. So, so when, okay, so we go back to your youth and you felt comfortable, you, you know, this was kind of normal for you to, to feel kind of a connection um, that maybe other people d- didn't feel, but when did you realize something was going on with you that was particularly unique uh, compared to other folks? Well, <laughs> um, 
because I was picking up evil and, and bad things, I really um, wanted nothing to do with it. Right. So I turned away from it. And um, I think that, I don't know that I felt um, that it was unique necessarily. I just didn't really want it around. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and we sort of talked about it in my family a little bit, but um, I felt like the people in my family, if they had that ability, they did not use it for very good purposes. Did they take you seriously? Um, well, I didn't really tell them. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, my like my father did have some of this ability, but he wasn't a very nice person, and so I didn't want to be anything like him. Um, and so I really didn't want my abilities associated with that kind of stuff. And um, I did talk to my mom a little bit about it, and they, they did take me seriously, but I don't think they really knew what to do with me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then when um, it wasn't until, I guess, until my grandfather died um, in his late 80s that my grandmother and I actually did talk about it, and she had seen him, um, you know, after he died, and I was the one who helped him pass over um, and things like that, so... It was really then that um, everyone started to take me a little bit more seriously. Right, right. Well, <clears throat> you got into the medical field. I mean, when did you decide that you were going to, you know, couple this with the medical profession and helping other people? When I went through uh, my recovery, yeah. um, I was, you know, as I said, I was 16, and I really felt like I had been given a gift from God of being being let, um, being able to recover, because most people don't get better from bulimia at all. So I really feel like I was given a gift, and part of that gift was to help other people find God within themselves mm -hmm. and find who they really were. So I became a licensed counselor, um, and then I was also, I was finding that even though I was using, um, you know, a lot of techniques that I had learned and, and things like that, a lot of it was just listening to God and helping people through that. So I did that until um, I did that, and I was a, also an artist. And I'm going to be 51. Um, and it wasn't until approximately three and a half years ago that I found out sort of a mistake that I had this ability to do the medical intuitive work. How, how did you stumble across that? Well, um, my mom got very sick. Um, she, nine years ago, she got a flu shot and became paralyzed. Oh. A, yeah. Um, I found out that happens quite frequently, but it kind of turned my family upside down and it changed me. And I, like a lot of people, you sort of are going along on your path and you find that things don't make sense and things you thought you'd be doing um, suddenly don't really fit with your life anymore. Yeah. You know, um, so I found out about this book um, by Mona Lisa Schultz, who's a world-renowned medical intuitive. And lo and behold, uh, about, she was going to be at a workshop about um, two weeks later, um, two hours from my house. So I said, hey, you know, what the heck? I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I might as well do this. And I went to the workshop and she basically said, I'm going to give you a name and an age of this person or animal, and I'd like you to tell me everything you know. And I was very, very surprised that I knew quite a bit. Um, and it was things such as what the person looked like when they were young, um, characteristics of them. Um, I knew that these people had been bullied. I knew that, um, like I could tell, people were hunched over. Um, I knew all sorts of without even things. see without even seeing them. Yes, without seeing them. Yeah, yes, just a name and an age. Um, and so um, she said, "You know, I don't know what you do for a living, but I think you should be pursuing this." So I took some trainings with her for about a year online, and um, for the past three years, I've been you know doing this for people, and it's been pretty amazing. Okay, so what 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 is is some people are saying, 
<clears throat> so what is the what is the payoff for you? In other, in, in other words, what is the purpose that you're telling people information they may already know? Is it because you're telling them stuff they don't know? But the way they that spirit seems to work is the the chart that I have that I give them the report. It's a four page report and it's very long and detailed. So some of it is to verify things they already know about themselves to to verify that I am um, talking the truth. Right, if, gotcha. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, and then the other piece of it is telling them things that they may not know. For example. A lot of the people who come to me have been to a lot of doctors, and they feel really bad. They don't know what's wrong. They've been getting misdiagnosed, um, or they've been getting um, been told that nothing's wrong, that it's all in their head, something like that. Right. So I will, let's say, um, one of the things I pick up a lot is Lyme disease. It's pretty prevalent. Yeah. And, you know, it's um, so... I will say, okay, these are the symptoms that I'm picking up with you. And I don't diagnose because that's not responsible. And I'm not a doctor and I'm not a lab test. But what I will do is say, these are the symptoms I'm picking up. And um, I do these reports without talking to them at all, which is the name and age. So I will, let's see, I do a long distance thing. I'll email them the information. Then we'll talk on the phone for an hour, hour and a half, and then um, I'll be able, we'll be able to verify, yes, I have these symptoms, let's say, and I will get more information as we're talking, and then what I will do is find them, somebody in their area of the country, or go work with somebody that I already know or something like that, who can diagnose, test, treat um, the things that I've found in their bodies. So it's, um, I think they're giving me that information they know to, um, to kind of, um, you know, verify that I do know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then also to give them some faith in the new, the new information that I'm presenting. So, so when you do this, okay, so you need their name and you need their age. Now, if I were to play devil's advocate, there, there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of people out there that would say, well, if you got if I got a name and an age, I can find out a lot of information on social media. Absolutely, uh, and, and I'm sure you've heard that before, right? Absolutely, absolutely. How do you answer that? Um, I would um, absolutely invite anyone to take a look at my charts because the information is so incredibly personal. Mm-hmm. Um, and you saw the interview that was just on. Yes, I did. Uh, uh, and one of the things that the host, one of the hosts, brought up is. Um, you know, I did a um, uh, reading for one of the reporters, and one of the hosts brought up, hey, is that information on social media? And the person that did the reading for him no, said, no way. You know, this is right. way too personal. And it was stuff like if the person had been sexually abused, um, how her grandfather and her grandmother died, like specifics about that. Um, if, if Sometimes I can tell if somebody's had a hysterectomy. Um, I can tell... If people have had surgeries, like in that particular case with that woman, I could tell the surgeries she's had. That's Things right. I remember that. Put on. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my people don't even have social media accounts. So. Right, um, right, right. Not everybody so, does that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's really, really personal information. Yeah. And um, like in that case, they wanted me to do the reading live. And it's not how I work, number one, that I said, I can't do that because this information is so personal that, you know, and she was really happy when she saw the reading that I did not do it live. So. Oh, right, right, right. So it, it, uh, you wouldn't, um, somebody just can't call you up at the spur of the moment and say, here's my name and my age and give me a reading. No, no, um, because I go into a little bit of a meditative state. Right. And then the chart takes probably an hour, hour and a half, and then I also do... Um, a symbolic painting for people too. Yeah, that's really cool. I saw the painting that you did uh, of her, and I remember. And one of the first things they mentioned was, "Oh, look, it looks like I have antennas." Uh, <laughs> was was there something to that with the antenna thing, or was that just the artwork, or what? No, that 
In that person's case, it was actually a spiritual psychic connection. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. All of the symbols mean something, the colors mean something. They're all significant. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's talk about the recovery community. Let's talk about addiction, for instance, and how what you do can help people in that area. All right? Oh, sure. That'd all be great. All right. So, folks, don't go away. More with my guest, medical intuitive Katie Beecher, when we return. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Restoring lives one step at a time. This here is Lizzie, and something's not right. For Lizzie has thoughts to take her own life. She feels sad, she feels lonely, that the world is unfair. But what she seems to not notice is that there are people who care. Her friends and her family, they start to see signs. For Lizzie looks hopeless, anything but fine. Her moods seem to change in the blink of an eye. One minute she's smiling, the next one she cries. What people fail to realize is that Lizzie has fear. Why does she feel the world would be better if she wasn't here? Lizzie's friends and her family decide to intervene. They realize that her situation was more serious than it seemed. It was then that they made a call that would keep her alive. 1-800-273-8255. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline helped Lizzie get on track. They assist all people, young and old, and help them get their lives back. Because of those around her, Lizzie made it out okay. She got the help she needed and inspires people every day. If you were in this place, you'd want someone to catch your fall. So if you see someone in trouble, tell someone. Make the call. This is Tony Morosi from the recovery band Selfish Steam, and we're listening to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show with the Monty Man on KHLT Broadcasting. Well, welcome back to the show, and my guest this week, uh, Katie Beecher, a medical intuitive. Uh, you can visit her website at katiebeecher.com or follow the link here at take12radio.com. Uh, that's K-A-T-I-E-B-E-E-C-H-E-R. Dot com. I encourage you to do that to find out more information. Uh, you can uh, contact Katie and talk to her more. I'm sure there, the, there's questions you'll have that we don't cover here today in this short amount of time. All right. So uh, people with um, co-occurring mental health issues, people with trauma, um, people with uh, addiction uh, issues going on in their lives, um, Somebody is struggling. I'm just to give you a hypothetical. Somebody's struggling sure. with, they just can't. I mean, I, I gave you an example. Somebody who loves God with all their heart, their soul, and their strength. I mean, they've been, they've been in a faith community for years, surrounded about loving, around loving, caring people. They've been going to 12 step support meetings. They've been applying and implementing those 12 steps in their life to the best of their ability, and they just can't stay sober. And they call you up and they say, Katie, can you help me? Can you help them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, every, as you know, everybody's situation is different. Yeah. Um, and there's so many reasons for why people uh, start using sure. substances. Um, it's self-medication. It's trauma. It's some kind of stress in their life. It's usually a combination. Yeah. And so... What I do, one of the things I really love about what I do is it's very individualized. And um, I really believe that that God looks at people as individuals and doesn't judge us. So that is one of the things that is, is extremely important to me, that I look at everyone from a loving perspective, and I don't judge anyone. I mean, if, if I was, you know, when I'm perfect, I can judge other people, first of all. Um, and the last thing people need who are um, addicted or using is to feel any worse about themselves. 
Yeah, amen to I that. No, you know, I go ahead. Sorry. No, I was saying amen to that. I, the, the, you know, one of the things that's very popular in some fellowships is this whole idea: if you're new, you need to shut up, sit down, take the cotton out of your your uh, ears and shove it in your mouth and listen. You have nothing to say. And you know, I hear that kind of attitude, and I'm thinking, you know, you couldn't push somebody more towards their drug of choice if you handed it to them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's it's you're in such a low place already. You bet. And you you know, um, it's a little bit of an aside, but it's related. I was doing a reading on someone this morning, and um, her son, who had died from an overdose, actually came through during the reading. Wow. And, yeah, um, and so um, her son said that he was picking up on the guilt that his mother was feeling. And I said, you know, first of all, there's nothing that you could have done. Um, mm. He was 18 when he died, you know, it it's, has nothing to do with what kind of a parent you are. Um, the kid was hurting. He, he there was nothing he could do. You know, when you're 18, you think you're invincible. You think nothing's going to happen to you. Um, addiction's a horrible thing. It's a disease, and he had tried to stop. He wasn't able to. Yeah. Um, you know, and and it just it, it affects entire families, as I don't have to tell you. So yeah. You know, these these people are already hurting, and. Um, I look at every case very individually, um, and when you when you look at any kind of um, any kind of illness at all, I always try and get to the root cause. And with what I do again, it looks at all of the root causes: spiritual, um, physical, emotional, and it's it's always more than one thing. So. Let's say um, with a lot of addicted people, there's been some sort of abuse. Sure. So there's, you know, there's that hurt to deal with and that healing to deal with and that um, a lot of the time some guilt associated with that. So there's that aspect. And then there's often um, medical things to deal with, like there's um, low cortisol from adrenal stress. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's depression. Sometimes there's... um, nutritional deficiencies. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, of things to look at. And um, you know, if, and then there's also, like, things within the family and um, depending on the ages and um, there's just so many aspects of it. So I really try to, I, I said I, but spirit and I, um, really try to look at as many aspects of it as possible and, and get to the root causes and get to what constructively can be done to try and work toward solving the problems, you know? Right, right. Be- because the truth of the matter is, and even even the, the co-founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, the, the mothership, so to speak, of the 12-step world, uh, would be the first to, to tell us that many times we need outside help. Many, Absolutely. You, you, you know, and, and there's a mentality within our 12 step meeting sometimes that this is all you need. This, If you just follow these directions, these 12 steps. Well, within those 12 steps, though, there's a lot of suggestions uh, about getting outside help. And people, right. they, they don't see that. And so they, they're trying. And the reason I gave you the example of the person that had a strong belief in God and was going to church and doing everything right is because. Even if a person has that, there could be medical stuff going on and trauma and so forth, and they just can't stay sober. Just because they love God with all their heart doesn't mean they're doing something wrong, right? Right. Absolutely. There's other things going on. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, in my case, um, I had a very great—I had a great spiritual base. I had a wonderful therapist. Um, but I also had chemical depression, and I needed some medication. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of different things going on. So absolutely. So you're you're, you're really kind of the epitome of holistic because you're you're looking at the whole person, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and I help them. I work with people all over the world. So when I do my readings, I include follow up, which means I find wherever you are in the world, I find resources for you that will not only work with me, but also will fit with your philosophies, that'll fit with your way of thinking, so that I don't just, you know, it's not just, here's the reading and I'm dumping you now. It's, 
um, let's find you people where you are who can support you, who can help get you what you need, and then I'm available. Once you have a reading with me, you can like email me till the end of time. It's a joke, but it's not really. Um, <laughs> so, and and I'm always there for you. And um, you know, I'm also since I'm a licensed counselor, also. Um, I participate with out of network insurances, which is a really great help for people. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm still a resource. And so that's a great thing. And I've been through a lot of stuff myself, too. So, sure, sure. So, so you've been there. So you're one of us. So that's that uh-huh, right, yeah. that right there lends a ton of credibility. Uh, you get it. Um, you, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're a counselor, you're a medical professional, and, and you're intuitive. And, right. and and again, um, you know, this is the ability to discern things that maybe some of us either haven't learned how to or or we don't have the ability to do so. We we have we have people speak into our lives all the time. I mean, I have a sponsor. You know, I have a wife. I have a uh, I have a eighteen year old son that's probably wiser than me by a hundred years. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and so we have people speaking to our lives all the time. So this really isn't you shouldn't be thought of as something strange and bizarre. Um, but we like to label things that we don't understand. And there's certain language that you're using, like reading, for instance. Some people are right. going, oh, she's a tarot card reader. And that, that's not what, right. that's not what you're doing. Um, so people need to understand that. Let, let me ask you your opinion about something. Sure. Um. I, I travel a lot within the Christian community and the faith recovery community. Um, and on occasion, I will. Run, I had a guy get in my van. Uh, we were going up to the, uh, the Franklin Graham Decision for America planning conference for the state of Oregon uh, from the Billy Graham Association, just calling people to pray and not telling anybody how to vote or anything, just telling them they, we, we, need, to, we need to get on our knees, you know. Uh, we're, we're in trouble here, and... So I was going up to this conference and, and we were picking a guy up uh, that wanted to go to on, on his way. And he's a, a, a leader in ministry within our community. I never met the man. And he says to me, he says, have you ever met anybody? You're the addiction radio guy, right? I said, yeah. He says, have you ever met anybody that was demon possessed that was an alcoholic? And I said, no, I haven't. And he, he was shocked. And I, I said, I'm not saying that's not a possibility. It's just not been right. in the sphere of my experience. Right. And he said, well, you probably haven't, didn't know it. And I go, no, I, I haven't. And uh, so then he, he kind of dropped it. I kind of knew where he was going. Uh, right. And, and so we get out of the van and we're going into this meeting and he noticed the way I was walking because I've had two hip surgeries and my back's a mess. And he says, before you leave today, um, I'm going to heal you. And he says, can I, can I lay hands on you? And I said, no, you can't. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't know you, dude. Right. I don't know you. I know who you say you are. Right. Um, do, do you think that's wisdom, my decision? I, I've asked a couple of people this because I felt like I was being a little harsh on the guy. But I'm, I'm really picky about who I let do that. Okay. I really like what you did, and here's why. One of the things I tell people is I never want you to substitute my words or my judgment for your own. Mm. And I, one of the greatest gifts I believe I can give people is to teach them to connect with God within themselves and their own intuition. Mm. Because that is what healed me. Yeah. And that is the best thing you can do for yourself is to listen to what's best for you. Um, I, when I do my work with people, it's a group effort, if you will. Um, we, when I give people the reports, we interpret it together. It isn't just, this is what Katie says and that's the way it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's what are you getting from this? How do you feel about this information? Um, how does the picture strike you? Um, how do you feel? I want people to learn to be strong themselves, you know, um, and use their own judgment. They have to be able to pick up evil and wrong and things like that in their own life. So one of the most important things people, I think, even like when we're kids, we're not taught to be strong ourselves and to listen to our intuition. 
and to use our own judgment. And then you end up doing things like getting addicted um, or following a crowd or you doing things you don't want to do, you know, because you're not listening to yourself. So I think what you did is, is great. And um, I encourage people to use their own judgment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's the other thing, too. Just because something's uncomfortable doesn't mean God's not in it, right? Um, sometimes the most uncomfortable things are the things we most need to do. Yeah, you bet. And, and I, I will tell you, when I had my hip surgeries, which it was horrific experience, mm-hmm. I got MRSA twice, never dealt with opiate-based pain medication. And, right. I, I mean, it was horrible. But you know what? During that time... um my alone time with my heavenly father got so, we got so close. It was so special that I was like, you know what? This could be my greatest asset, this downtime. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I tell people is there's a reason why things happen. And it's not that you cause your illness. Right. That it happens to you because you're a bad person. It's, I always look at, you know, when I start to feel crabby, it's like, okay, how am I not taking care of myself? How am I not taking the time I need with God or with whatever to, yeah. you know, with myself? Um, it's, it's about you know, listening, and if you're not listening, then God's going to get you. And sometimes it, it's an anvil over the head. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I always, I always say, you know, if the devil can't get you to sin, he'll get you to get too busy. <laughs> you, you, you know, and, and God will slow you down. You know, right. you know, you, if you're not going to rest, I'm, 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 I'm bringing, the, <laughs> you're going to have this surgery and you're going to rest <laughs> Absolutely, uh, because, because, you know, the most important thing is that we are in good spiritual fit condition. And, and if we're, if we're going 50,000 miles an hour doing good stuff, uh, right. we, we can, especially if we've got any history uh, of addictions at, at all, we can fall, we can default, fall into our default and end up drinking, using, overspending, mm-hmm. eating, whatever, uh, we seem to default to those things that, that so easily beset us before. Um, I, 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 I don't know. And some people are thinking, wow, we don't know about money anymore. Uh, I, I, I don't know that I buy into this stuff a hundred percent. I I'm very careful. I line up things with scripture. If they don't line up, I tend to throw them out. Um, sure. it, it, you know, that kind of thing. And so I just want people to understand, listen, it, it, you know, if you're wondering about this, talk to Katie, contact Absolutely. Katie, make your own decision, make an informed decision for yourself. I just don't want you to miss out on something uh, just because it appears to be a little out of the ordinary for you. Uh, you know, if if you read, if you read any scripture at all, there's some pretty wild stuff that went on. And, right, and, and a know. lot of my clients are um, are born again Christians. Yeah, a lot of them, you know, and they. I have no problem with people asking me questions at all. You can ask me anything you want. Um, it doesn't offend me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't, you yeah. know, um, no problem at all. So, well, and that that that, that 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 speaks volumes to your integrity because people that are are shysters or they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Uh, or maybe they think they're doing the right thing, but it is based in in something evil. They tend to get yeah. defensive. They get defensive. They they're not open about it. They're very controlling, uh, and, and that kind of thing. And you don't come across that way at all. Um, KatieBeecher dot com is the website. You want to check that out uh, today uh, before you log off of the internet. Listen, we're going to take uh, our last break, and when we come back, more with my guest Katie Beecher when we return. During a rally in the evening of July 1958, dozens of gang members from the streets of New York City came forward to turn their will and their lives over to Jesus Christ, including Nikki Cruz from the street gang, the Mau Mau's. The morning after the rally, Nikki and his gang, along with other gang rivals, traded in their weapons for Bibles. This was to be the beginning of the world's largest and most effective faith-based treatment program for those living with life-controlling issues such as alcohol and narcotic addiction. In the years to come, the author of The Cross and the Switchblade, Pastor David Wilkerson, would commit his life and passion to working with men and women from all walks of life through the founding of the International Ministry of Teen Challenge. 
Well, we here at Take 12 Recovery Radio invite you to tune in every Monday for the Adult and Teen Challenge Good News Report for powerful stories of deliverance from the dark side of addictions and the life-changing journey of men and women who have been set free and now walk in the light of their Creator. That's every Monday, broadcasting all day, right here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial for the Adult and Teen Challenge Good News Report. Well, when I went to my first meeting, I was really scared. I didn't know what to expect. A bunch of drug addicts in a room together? Give me a break. It's really It'll weird. No matter what anybody said, no one seemed surprised. Other people felt the same way. Well, you know, I've been running alone for so many years, and now I wasn't. You know what I it mean? It is possible to stop doing drugs. The proof's at the meetings. But you got to get there first. Call Narcotics Anonymous. We can help. 800-TODAY-NA. That's 800-863-2962. Yeah, I don't care when the sun goes down where I lay my weary head. Green, green valley or rocky road, it's there I'm gonna make my bed easy yeah. now. Green, green, it's green, they say, on the far side. Whoa, that's taking us back a few years. Roger Whitaker and the new Christy Minstrels. Gee, gads, I'm feeling old. Uh, green, green. It's green, they say, on the far side of the hill. Listen, let me tell you something. It is not always greener on the other side. It, 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 it isn't. Uh, one of my favorite uh, phrases I, I heard years ago from a Bible college professor was, learn to grow where you are planted. And, uh, you know, wherever you are, wherever God has placed you, uh, he's got a plan for your life. And, uh, you know, the whole idea behind recovery is to is really not sobriety. It's being restored to sanity so you could be of maximum service to your creator and to your fellow man. That's really the, the whole deal of it. And if 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 you're sick and you can't figure out why and you've done everything you think that you know you've you've jumped through all the hoops and you've you've done everything you think you've done everything right you may discover some things like I did I discovered that I needed to stop depending on my prayers and start depending on the one I was praying to uh, I needed to stop depending on those twelve steps and start depending on the one those steps were pointing me to. Folks, there's no power in those steps. Those steps are there to show you your need for a power. And if you're powerless and I'm powerless, zero plus zero is zero. We need a power to do for us what we are unable to do for ourselves. And however you tie into that, listen, here at Take 12 Radio, we want to encourage you. We have an email address, take12radio at comcast.net. That's take, the number 12, radio at comcast.net. And we can help point you in the right direction. Well, one of the people that is about the help of uh, helping others is Katie Beecher. Her website is katiebeecher.com. She's been where we've been. She's struggled with life controlling issues. And now she's in the business of helping other people. She's a medical intuitive. She's a counselor. And she is my guest this week. All right. So here's, uh, here's the question. Here's the elephant in the room, Katie. You ready? Yes, yes, yes. What's this cost? Um, for the reading, yeah. uh, which is a four-page report and the painting, and a meeting with me, um, which is about an hour, hour and a half. I'm not a real stickler with how much um, time we take. And the follow-up, it's 200 That's it? Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's not very much. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. She's not getting rich off this. That's obviously not her intent. <laughs> and also, um, some of my families have kids who may have autism or something like that. Yeah. And if I work with a family, um, sometimes I will get asked, will you do a reading on my child? And what I say is, um, I would take your money, but I would be better off doing a reading on you and then answering as many questions as you'd like about your child. So I do the reading on the parent, and then for the for an extra fifty dollars, I will answer any questions they would like about their child and look at medical records and things like that too. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm not getting rich off this. Yeah, yeah. And so, let me once again dispel any weird thoughts of people. Katie's not sitting on a pillow, floating in the air in your living room. <laughs> um, she doesn't got a bunch of people with cameras, you know, taking readings from you know 
spirits flying through your house and poltergeists and get that out of your head. That's not what's going on here. You know, I look at this, Katie, as another medical method. I, I, I mean, right. I, you go to your doctor. I mean, gosh, we were talking about this the other day. We pay our doctors thousands of dollars, and then we lie to them. Right. You, you know, yep. how how you doing? You smoking? Oh, no, I haven't smoked in days. Exactly. You know, how you doing? Right. How's, how's, should we do a, a blood test, see what your sugar levels are? Oh, no, I've been fine. I've, I haven't been eating any sugar. And, and we just ate a candy bar. You know, we, we spend this money. And, and and they can't tell us what's wrong with us because we're lying to them. Exactly. Um, so one of the first things people have to do, no matter who they're seeking help from, is they got to be willing to be honest, right? Right, right. Because if somebody's... They tell me things that they've never told anyone because they come up in the readings all the time. You know? So it's, it's so <laughs> healing. Um, and I'm able to do so much work and also get them to people who can help them too because we've done... You know, ten years of therapy in, in one hour. <laughs> it was great. Wow, wow. So, have you have you ever talked to somebody and um, you were able to 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 determine that what they were telling you was a line of baloney? Well, um, it doesn't really happen that way. It's not like that. Because, yeah. No, because I do the reading before I meet with them. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, and so. Um, the information that I I get, um, well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. There's one person. Well, the deal I do with people is this: um, I take a deposit because I do spend a lot of time beforehand. And if I ever um, give you a report or give you information that does not fit, like if I'm not accurate, yeah, then I will return your deposit and your reading is free because I'm not in the business of just you know knowing people. Sure. So. Um, and that's never happened before, thankfully. Um, but there was one person who wanted me basically to tell them exactly what they should do with their life and their career. And I said, okay, so I'm not a psychic, right. not a fortune teller, and that's really not what I do. And though my reading was pretty spot on, I said, I'm going to give you the money back anyway because that's really not what you came for, and ah. I, this just didn't work, you know? Yeah. Um, so what she was coming for, she wasn't really honest, I don't think, about um, what she, you know, was looking for. And um, it was like she'd quit her job um, and was looking for something that no one could really give. I couldn't, I couldn't give that. Um, so... I don't think she was being honest with herself, and um, so the whole process wasn't really authentic. Yeah. If that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does make sense. What What is your, and we, let's not, we won't mention any names here, but th- there are some people, one guy in particular, and he's not really, he's not on TV much anymore, but, uh, you know, there's always people that take advantage of their 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 giftings from televangelists to politicians to right. to intuitives to psychic readers to 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 you know people that are mechanics even i i mean right. you know there are people right. that take advantage of, of, of the things that god's gifted them with and and uh and i don't know i don't know these people personally so i, I can't really make a fair judgment call i know a lot of people right. do without proper information and and so forth but what do you think about that? I mean, because, you know, the, we've, we've got some so-called mediums on TV right now, one in particular I'm thinking of, uh, and they kind of come and go. What's your take on all that? Well, I think the fact that I am a licensed counselor does give me credibility. Um, and because I've been through a lot myself, I have empathy for people. And there are mediums who do tell people they have cancer or do diagnose. And to me... First of all, that is so irresponsible, and that's so scary, and I never want to scare people. Yeah. I always want to be um, supportive. I, it's just so not okay with me to do that, because people are putting such faith in you, and they're basically putting, you know, their life in your hands, and it's like, I don't, that's why I don't want people substituting their judgment, um, I mean, my judgment for theirs, you know, I don't want that kind of of power yeah. 
people need to have God have power in their life. Not me, mm-hmm. no, not anything else. I don't want that position. So um, that's why I'm so um, incredibly sensitive and careful about the information I do give and about them empowering themselves and and things like that. Um, it's just... You know, I'm very professional, and I really care about what I do, and um, I just, yeah, I yeah. just don't yeah, I that's wrong. I really do. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Well, Katie, we are out of time. Any closing thoughts that you would like to share with our listeners? Um, I will say that uh, my it, it is worth looking at my website, um, my abilities, and my accuracy has been verified by doctors and um, medical records. There's an article on my site that talks about that. So that might be interesting for some more skeptical people, but that, and that's okay. You know, if, if I didn't do this myself, um, I would be pretty skeptical. Sure. Weird, you know, um, and that's okay. And I welcome any questions. Um, and you're doing wonderful work. It's, it's terrific. And I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Folks, listen, uh, In the chapter, Working with Others, which is all about the 12th step, in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, Bill is talking to the reader. He's saying to him, remind the prospect, meaning the newcomer, that his recovery is not based on other people. It is based on his relationship with God. Katie is not saying depend on her. You just heard her say it. She's helping you to depend on on God. That's where the power comes from. That's that's those of us who are powerless. That's that's who we need in our life. That that's who we're talking about. And uh you know, she's she's uh, here to to help you get in touch with uh, some of these things. Maybe some things, maybe medically there's stuff that without a hormonal check and blood work up and things like that, you would never know. And uh, sometimes there's I knew a guy, Katie, I knew a guy that had a fatty tumor in the uh the area part of his brain that produced dopamine. There you go. And and he didn't know it. And once they got rid of that, guess what? He wasn't addicted. Exactly. That that whole he actually wasn't an addict at all. He had a medical condition going on in his brain, but he could have gone to twelve step support meetings till the day he died, and it wouldn't have done him much good. Uh, We we just don't know. So you know it it behooves us to check into these things. It really really does because we're not just. Uh, this flesh and blood running around, you know, we're, we're, we're a full, complete person, body, mind, and spirit. And uh, we need to treat, we need to treat addiction on, on all of those fronts, right? It's so, so, so true. And if you go to just a psychiatrist, they're going to give you drugs and they don't look at all other parts of the body that can, you know, like nutritional supplements and, and things and thyroid and hormones and all this other stuff going on. You know? yeah. So it's really important to look at everything. You betcha. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Good luck with what you're doing. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So, Katie, don't hang up. I'm going to come back to you after uh, the show's over. Uh, Folks, the website, again, is katiebelcher.com. You can follow the links here uh, or the link here at Take 12 Radio um, for the next several days. K-A-T-I-E-B-E-E-C-H-E-R. My guest, medical, intuitive counselor, and somebody who does care about your success as far as becoming a, 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 a productive member of society, getting back in tune with your spiritual self, Katie Belcher. Uh, many thanks to my guests today. Remember, our email address is take12radio at comcast.net. Until next time, I am wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs>